The last transcontinental flight I was on was in 2019. I was flying from Tokyo to London, a route that in total covers around 10,000 kilometers, almost half the globe. In front of you, a small screen draws a line across a map. Every centimeter of that line is a thousand miles of places you'll never know. And yet, in that instant, you are part of those places. This raises the question of what a person really is. Do we end at the limits of our skin, or was I that aeroplane? Was I the carbon footprint it was leaving, and was I its shadow on the ground? Travel is a form of play. It's about finding new places and inventing possibilities. Perhaps that gives some weight to the journeys we take and the world that becomes those journeys. In recent years, an internet-based movement has evolved called the Web Revival. The name is inspired by the civilized anarchy of the American folk revival that took place during the first half of the 20th century. The folk revival focused on celebrating humanity in a time of rapid industrialization, a parallel to the digi rapid digitization we see today. The images you're seeing are websites created by the Web Revival community. Their creators are mostly unknown, but all of these sites are modern and actively updated. The Web Revival is a reaction against ongoing trends on the internet today, such as the negative impact of social media on society, the overemphasis of monetization on creativity, and the impersonal flat design language that is often made for the benefit of engineers more than the web citizens. The core idea of the Web Revival is simple. Make your own website and make it chaotically. The Web Revival is about web design as play, and I mean play in the deepest sense of the term, where play is not about passing time, but about creating other realities so that we can become those realities. The Web Revival attracts a diverse following of people, but typically it's held together by five key ideals that most agree on. One, a sense that technology and the web today is lacking in true creativity. The idea that the web can be a place of warm, genuine interactions. Uh, that's number two. Three, a rejection of social media and its often toxic cultural impact. Four, the idea that we should understand and master the technologies in our lives. And five, a rejection of the so-called web three and the pointlessness of cryptocurrencies and NFTs. These ideals are expressed as nostalgic websites and homepages, created in a fever dream reimagining of Tim Berners-Lee vision of the web as a free information exchange, mixed with the design chaos of GeoCities, an early web host that was many people's first experience of a digital home. There is a strong nostalgia surrounding technology. It's a language that crosses boundaries, perhaps because when we see technologies from the past, we often see ourselves and the journeys we took to become what we are today. At its, heart, at its heart, I think the Web Revival expresses a desire to reclaim ourselves. The Web Revival is an attempt to recreate the web in our own image and by proxy to recreate ourselves in our own image. It tries to strip away the conformity of technology and envision something unexpected. I thought I'd take a moment now. Um, I thought I'd take a moment to take you on a tour of my own digital home. As of writing, this site has around 38 million hits and has been mentioned on a number of technology news sites and academic papers. It was started back in 2016 while I was still studying here in UCC and living in one of the ticky tacky housing estates outside Cove. I grew up on an island with a train. The world revolved around that island, and into this world, the train would carry lost souls. Time often forgot that island, and I dream of houses half caught in the past. It was a sad place, a pointless, stupid, beautiful mirage. Although I've not stayed true to it, this site was built as a house, with rooms and walls and windows, thin HTML walls, but strong and timeless, like that island I was on. Outside, the storm of the web would rage, but within those walls, it was always dusty and safe. That's a quote from the site introduction. What you're seeing here is a, what is called a landing page. They are a lost art form on the modern web. The purpose of a landing page is to celebrate the arrival of a visitor and to give them a hint of what is to come. 
The clouds float past, and the eyes of Horace peek at you sneakily from the distance. You are exiting the information superhighway. That's an ill-fated buzzword from the 90s for the internet. You click the enter button, surrounded by a halo. Maybe you're a little intimidated if this is your first time here. You're worried this place might be dangerous, but you're brave, so you continue. You've arrived on the homepage. The wall is covered in star goo, and there are objects everywhere. The nav bar on the side is glittering and animating, like gems or candy. You can hear the rain outside. Pleasant music is playing. It's peaceful and homely. Peace is something we create. It's a man-made construction. Deliberate peace is one of the arts of the web revival. We don't force feed you data. We let you find it. You click the window and find yourself outside. The music is sinister now. Peace is replaced by worry, and home is behind you. A message asks if you want to continue, and you do. You're in a forest now. The music is calm again. Maybe it's not so bad out here. You're feeling good again when you meet some glowing lights. They ask if you want to be friends, and you say yes. Oh no, a crow has come to inspect you. He's definitely invading your personal space. But then again, you're invading his forest, right? So you better do as he says. He asks you if you want a crown of yew berries or of nettles. Nettles sting, and that would hurt, so you pick the yew berries. Oh, that was a mistake. Yew trees are a graveyard tree, and the berries are poison. You should have known better. You're dead, but maybe it's not over. You crawl from your grave to a nearby house and go inside. Oh, you're back again. Welcome home, kiddo. How many times have you done this before? Have you ever left this house? Maybe it was always your home, and the time you spent away was just a dream. You're dusty and safe again. That was just one path in a labyrinth of webs within webs. This particular story was written back in 2016. It's one of the oldest parts of the site, and it remains one of the most popular parts to this day. As time went on, the project evolved in a few different directions. This is a texture archive containing around 3,000 abstract 90s textures. They were rescued from abandoned compact disk archives and are listed here freely for anyone to use. This was launched in 2020. This is a complex 3D world from 2020. It's a vast explorable space in which visitors can see each other and travel together while meeting mysterious creatures from another galaxy. In 2021, the site started exploring more data-driven spaces. This is the Museum of Modern GIFs, a virtual gallery containing 100,000 obsolete GIF images sourced from the web. GIF images are a digital folk art created by unknown individuals often decades ago. They embody the ideals, fears, and personalities of those individuals. They are memories of the past and hopes for the future. Here, the GIFs are displayed in randomly generated rooms. Each time you visit a room, it's created and destroyed, and will probably never be seen again. Finally, this evolved into a fully 3D game world. Here you can watch as Oswamp, an archetypal video game character, flies through a virtual hall of GIFs. They seem infinite, yet the moment they are out of sight, they disintegrate. The aim was to capture the never-ending loop of loss and letting go of searching for something that can never be found, and ultimately the isolation of identity and the ephemerality of the self in the context of a final, endless white cube gallery. What you've seen of my work is just one window into a much larger journey. It was the web that started this journey and the web revival that brought me here today. The web revival is a revolving spectrum, a folk medium full of dead ends and broken links. But as we play in that noise, we are filling the void that becomes the future.